important three board or nexus each one of those was contained for normally low push button when they press it will produce high but because it is held down by a spring, spring normally so when you depress the mechanical contact tend to be bouncing so that will be producing uh, a desirable signal as shown here normally it's low when you depress it for the first time the signal bounces and then eventually it will settle up to a high value and then when you release the finger it is known that the bouncing pulse width per bounce is roughly one millisecond or higher and there will be several of them in the beginning and several also when the push button is released so the purpose of a button debouncer is to represent a single push like that to be a clean push that we will designate as BD to represent debounce push button so the job is to produce a debounce signal BD shown here in boldface line normally low representing the B before it got pushed when you push the button we like to hold that low sufficient amount of time 40 milliseconds somehow is quite popular what we're going to do is we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to introduce 4-bit ship register memory we will clock the ship register using a 100 hertz clock therefore each one in the period of each one of those will be 10 milliseconds so if we sample the status of the bouncy button B four times if at the end of that 40 millisecond we found the registered bid are all high then we can safely represent that as a valid push button depression and hold that until the push button is released this time our ship register will be accumulating all four bit of low so we will extend the high another 40 millisecond and then change it to, to low so the idea of converting bouncy in the beginning and the trailing end is now represented as a clean single pulse because our board is an on board very high frequency of 50 megahertz bouncing at the leading and trailing can be interpreted misinterpreted as changes of the value in signal b so what we're going to do is slow down our 50 megahertz by 500,000 to produce a 100 hertz we will use that 100 hertz and clock the 4 bit shape register each time the B is red 
it will be pushed from the right hand side of the 4-bit chip register toward the left. And another way of looking at it is by considering this block here. Here is a scaled down block which is generated by scaling down our 50 megahertz by 500,000 to produce a 100 hertz signal. We will use that to clock our 40 millisecond delay, which is our 4-bit chip register as shown below. Where on the left side of that, we fed in the status of the detected status value of B. And if at the end of four, four times detection, the shift register fill up with one, then we will consider a debounce signal of high. Basically, it looked like as follow. Here we have the 4-bit shift register and the required action to be taken for generating the bounce signal. If the content of the 4-bit remain zero, then B is not push. BD is considered low. If to detection of the push button is something like this, either bit zero, bit one is high or low, then there should not be any change for the debound signal. If bit 4 of the register is 0, regardless of the previous 3 detection, there should not be any change either on the signal BD. But at the end of 4 consecutive clocking of the register, if the 4-bit register is filled with 1, then it is safe to assume after 40 milliseconds that we have a clean depression. So, so coming back to our debouncing block uh, concepts, it is now therefore very easy to use programming code either written in VHDL or in Verilog, even in low-level language, assembly language, we normally learn in EL262 or EE362. But it is much, much simpler to write the code in VHDL or Verilog uh, 